Leadership is a 100% time commitment. We take our care out there. We're nice, kindness, being friendly, and things like the high rule actually work. You take your care out there, more people are likely to bring it in here. Who's got to start that process? Me. Now, when people like us get together, we talk about school spirit. I have yet to walk into a school and say, we don't need help with school spirit. Everybody wants to improve school spirit. Admittedly, I've walked into some schools and they've gotten a better handle on it, and I've walked away going, wow, that school was good. Other schools I've walked into and said, wow, that school needed me. <laughs> Every school has these different levels of what's going on in the school. That's why it's great about a conference. You can get ideas from other people and go, wow, we can maybe take that and adjust it to our school. But when you get people together and talk about school spirit, people always think school spirit needs two things. I often hear this. People think school spirit always needs two things, Danny. One, we need good sports teams, right? Because when sports teams win, people get excited, right? My friends from Lucas out there, they, they were blessed by May. The, the London uh, paper ran an article about how awesome their sports teams were last year. They won a lot of things. And if they didn't win it, they lost it in the championship game, right? So I bet Lucas had pretty good school spirit because they're like, look at us, right? Well, schools like my old school, Laurier, probably weren't thinking the same way, right? Two, people often think that school spirit needs pep rounds or needs assemblies. These people getting together, doing what we just did there, ooh, ah, ooh. They picture that, they go, yeah, that's school spirit. And then you wake up and you're in a place called reality. In your case, reality, Ontario. It's just outside of Brantford, by the way. Do all your teams win all their games? In fact, some of you just kind of thought, if my team would have won a game, uh, that would have been a great thing. <laughs> two, give an assembly. Do you have a pep rally every two weeks at your school? No. In fact, some of you were literally thinking, what's a pep rally? <laughs> Not if you know what I'm saying. You don't really have pep rallies. Your ra or your rallies lack pep. <laughs> Not so peppy. You're nodding. Well, folks, I got good news. Real school spirit. School spirit that will make people remember you and what is going on in your school doesn't need pep rise and assemblies, doesn't need winning sports teams. In fact, let's be clear. My school loved football. We loved hockey. But the year I was in president, we lost both. Yet we were still, in last, still national school spirit champions. In fact, people still don't look back. They don't worry about what we lost. They remember how we did well. Then the end is not so much the sports scores that uh, matter, that's how people feel. So here we go. Real school spirit starts in classrooms and hallways. And these are both places all your schools have. Now, classrooms, some of you are thinking, oh, Andy, if I stand up in the middle of my class and go, OK, everybody, school spirit, <laughs> I'll be asked to leave my class. <laughs> you, get out of here. But Andy said, Not pull that at the teacher, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I'm known across North America as that kid. No, you don't start school spirit in class by leading cheers. You start school spirit in class by realizing that the number one problem, but hopefully in your case, the number one misconception that the student body has of student leaders. Do you know what that is? I think you do. Let me start the sentence. You finish it for me. Their number one problem with us is a perception that student leaders will abuse their privileges to get out of class. And on a day, you're all missing class. <laughs> there are people sitting in your classroom right now, and Tara going, oh, where's Antara? Oh, at a student leadership fun shop. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that just special? <laughs> So it means Antara and the rest of the student council are missing class again. Am I not right that Mr. or Mrs. Sarcastic at your school right now being mad at you because you're missing class? Yeah. How many have friends that throw attitude that you're with? Yeah. Oh, came to class today, did you? Oh, the seventh show up today, did you? Yeah. Sometimes that's your teachers, right? And it's so unfair, right? Because we're missing class. We have a good reason, don't we? We're at a conference. We're on a sports team. Music drama, we're setting up for the assembly. They need our help, man. Don't they need us? Yeah. Especially when I look at all your precious faces and I think, come on. No one in this room has ever twisted the truth to get out of class earlier than needed. <laughs> Stayed later out of class than they needed. Took a half day off, if you know what I mean. <laughs> look at all the 
nervous smiles in the room. <laughs> People looking at their feet. I haven't done it yet. This week. <laughs> well, wait, it's Monday. And I'm already visiting school. It's a good week. <laughs> Folks, one more time. I'm up here because I sat there. I didn't read the book on leadership. I didn't see a show on A&E, time well spent, about student leadership. I'm one of you. Because I'm one of you, I've seen every trick of the trade, especially on how to get out of class. Have you ever tried this one? The dance is at eight o'clock. Set up time, noon. <laughs> you know that one. My game's at 3.30. Stretching time, 10.30. <laughs> When there was a hockey game at my school, it felt like the hockey players took a hockey holiday. When there was a basketball game at my school, it felt like the basketball players took a basketball break. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like they took an extra bit of time before the game. How many have seen this at your own school? How many have seen what I'm just about to describe to you? I'm at a school, St. Joseph's there in St. Thomas. I know they're here today. They were, I was at the school a few years ago. I'm talking with the president. He says, yeah, Andy, we're all set up for you. We got the gym all ready. Girl comes up. All right, just got out of class. What do you need help with? Nothing, we're all set up. Girl's looking at her face. I just got out, I can't go back. Well, you should go back, we don't have anything to do. Well, give me something to do. We got spirit day tomorrow, what can I do for the spirit day? I guess you can go blow up balloons. Oh yeah, I'm gonna blow up balloons, she said. And I interject, right? Don't you think you should go back to class? And then she gave the classic student leader comeback. She said, Oh, I got Mrs. Let's say her name's Champion. I got Mrs. Champion. She like loves me. <laughs> That's right, folks. You don't miss class because you're bad. You don't miss class because you're evil. You don't miss class because you abuse the system to your own ends. <laughs> you get away with missing class because, as she said, the teacher like loves me. <laughs> Bluntly. You're some of the most loved students in the school. Teachers love teaching you. You get along with the vice principal. Heck, some of you call your principal by his first name or her first name. What up, G? <laughs> okay, maybe you shouldn't do that. But anyhow. In other words, you have a great reputation. And for some of you, if not all of you, it's easy to get five minutes out, half an hour out. Because no one's going to freak because you're a good kid. You're good kid. You. You put on the face. To your advisor, and you say, if I don't get out of class, we'll never be ready. <laughs> well, can you do the quiver? And your advisor, okay. But folks, I know we sometimes have to miss class. I played football, track and field meets, the pep rallies in the last period. We have to be start, starting to set up by noon. I hear you. But folks, what I don't like is when we abuse the privilege. When all of a sudden, half an hour becomes half a day. Five minutes becomes 15. When we're done setting up for the event, we look at our watch, half an hour left in class, our first response is, as if I'm gonna go back to class. <laughs> I want you to change that mindset with this very simple statement. Think about the most negative people in your school. <laughs> What's the number? <laughs> Here's my. Are they here, by the way? No, they're not. <laughs> Who best represents our school? You people, go with the cowards. Um, <laughs> now, think about the most, the one thing they dislike most about school. They don't like going to class. Yet they see us getting out of class. And what we have, <laughs> folks, in student leadership is a massive perception problem. We're up there getting out of class. They feel like they're down here going to class. This, can we be visual, is the worst way to lead. When you think about leaders you look up to, leaders that you like and respect, forget about famous people. You don't know Sir John A. McDonald. You don't know Terry Fox, Martin Luther King. Read some of his writings. That's amazing stuff, but you still don't know. <laughs> Folks, think about leaders you actually really look up to that you know. Often teachers, adults, older friends that you really respect. Let me tell you what you like about them most. They don't act better than you. That teacher is totally amazing. You're stunned by what he or she knows. But they still talk at your level. Do you not love people like that? They don't act better than you. 
I'm going to tell you that one of the main reasons Martin Luther King was successful was not his speeches. It's because he got hit in the face just like everybody else when he walked in those bricks. But when a man, when he was speaking, came up and slugged him so hard, knocked him over, and all of his bodyguards jumped off of him. And Martin Luther King said, don't hit him, pray for him. Because if that man has so much hate in his heart that he hits me, his problems are worse than mine. Boom! People then relate. I'm going to tell you, Terry Fox is a national hero in our country. It was voted the second greatest Canadian of all time, only behind the guy that gave us national Medicare. That is, when my dad was fighting cancer, I didn't have to pay for it. He didn't have to pay for it. He didn't have to worry about bills because your parents and all of us, we contribute to a big fund called the government. And while it's not perfect, just spend some time in the United States and realize it's better what they have, if not what Kenya has, and I've been to Kenya as well, where George, the child I sponsor, his dad, Got his arm hurt in work. He couldn't work anymore. And that's that. There's nothing there to help him. And now they're in the slums. So folks, we identify with that Terry Fox because he was one of us. He was two years older than you grade 12s. Decided to do a little run because he had lost his leg to cancer. Not to raise money for himself, but to raise money for kids your age. So they can beat cancer. That's why we relate to him. So if you can think that way, when I abuse my privilege to get out of class, I'm acting like this. So sometimes we have to miss class, but why don't we do this? Let's go to class. Let's minimize the opportunities to miss class. Let's say if I know I'm going to miss class, I tell my teacher ahead of time. So I show them, hey, your class is really important. And then I catch up with them later saying, what homework did I miss? What a compliment that is to our teacher. What homework did I miss? I'm really interested. What homework did I miss? In class, when I am in class, I'm going to participate a lot. I'm going to put my hand up. I'm going to be a volunteer. I'm going to be fun. I'm going to laugh at the teacher's joke, even, even if it's kind of corny. Because <laughs> don't you laugh when people laugh at your corny jokes? You start telling a story, and halfway through, you realize it's a lame story. <laughs> but your friends are still with you. And you're like, I love you guys. You still be that person. <laughs> and show people you're just like them. Now what makes you different? You do things for them. I skipped that many classes my entire student leadership career. It was May of grade 13. I was so wrapped with guilt, I told my teacher, who happened to be my student council advisor, the next day. Mr. Ritchie was his name. He laughed out loud. He said, let me get this straight, because he had substitute that day. You skipped my class. Yeah. He was laughing. Is that the first skip you ever did in your high school career? I said, yeah, it is. Oh. You know, Andy, they're going to ask me why we had nine dances, why we had seven pep rides, why we have all these people supporting our activities. I'm going to tell them that stops on top. It started with you, Andy. It happened about a month ago, Andy. You're getting set up for the air band lip sync contest. You know, you dress up your favorite band and you perform. It was always a big hit at my school. You're out of class. One of the cool guys in the back row of our class. You know cool guys? Says out loud, where's Andy? I knew where you were. I knew where you were. I knew where you were. I was about to say where you were. But then Carrie, sitting right beside him. Carrie, a friend of yours, but not a close friend. Carrie, most importantly, not on student council, says, shut up. He's doing something for you right now. And boom, when I watch a non-student leader defend her president, I realize, oh my gosh, the kids get it. The kids get it. They see when Andy's not in class, he's doing something for them. Because when he's done, he's back in class. I didn't act better than my fellow students. I have to go to class, don't I? I have to do my homework. I have to respect the teachers and administration. By the way, the great advantage of that, uh, you get better marks as well. How many here have college or university aspirations? How many realize that to get those aspirations, you need to cross 70, if not 75%, if not 80, if not 85%, if not 90, you know what I'm saying? If you want to reach those goals, go to class. And when you miss your homework, catch up on the homework. Hallways, now it's your opportunity to make a contribution. Hallways, how can you make care contagious in the hallways? I'm going to challenge you with an attitude. Walk through the hallway with an attitude of, the hallway will be better when I walk through it. <coughs> yeah. Notice I said attitude. Don't say this out loud. The hallway might be a whole lot emptier if you want to say that. Okay, buddy. Give me five examples of ways you can make 
care contains in the hallway? Go, put up your hand and give me one. Yes. Smile. Smile. Sometimes you have hundreds of people walking the hallways, but you can always put out a smile. Because a smile says I'm friendly, does it not? You can talk to me. Got questions? <laughs> High five. The no, never mind. Wait for the picture there. There we go. What else can you do in the purple? Wave. Wave. Slight wave to people. In the orange. Say hello. Say hello. Take the high rule that we take outside of school and bring it into school. Now, some of you are thinking, we got 1,700 people at our high school. Right, St. Teresa's doing this year? I'm not saying you have to walk through the hallways going, hi, 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 miss you. Hi. Because um, that's an awkward turtle moment. Backing up. A few weeks ago, awkward Thanksgiving turkey moment backing out of it. All I'm saying is you can sometimes get out a smile, can you not? You can sometimes get out a little wave, a little punch it out. Well, yes? Um, making friends with people. Making friends with people. How do you do that? The other things we just mentioned. All right, smile. Say hi. Yes? Sing and dance. Sing and dance. That's not everybody's style, but it's your style. Why not? Busted it out. How else can you? Be courteous. Chivalry is not dead, right, girls? Hold open doors. They they drop something. Pick it up. Yes. Okay, my voice is gonna fall out. But not fall out. I don't know what I mean by that. But um, when you say hello, if you know them, say your name too, because it's more personal. Names. <laughs> names are gold to people's ears, are they not? Yeah, I love when people say hey. Michelle. What is your name? Michelle Petronella McDonald. Hi, Michelle. How are you? It's nice. Michelle. She's exactly right. Say people's names. Garbage. What should you do? Pick it up. So I arrive at this school. I just see the student. You know the gravy covered fries we get? Right in the middle of the hallway. I see the student right in front of me. He's just pinky. Moves some of the gravy and the fries back in the container. Toss them in the garbage. I follow him to the office. I say to the secretary, I'm looking for the key to the student council president. Turns out that was Keith. So that, that's me, and you must be Annie. I said, I said, Keith, I saw you did in the hallway. This is what he said. What did I do? <laughs> Keith didn't need a high five. He didn't need a gold medal. He just did it. Oh, yeah, clean up the hallways. I do that all the time. My house. This is my house. My crib. <laughs> I take care of my house. Poster falls down. What should you do? Put it back up. Lost his dignity. What should you do? Look at it. Oh, yearbook committee. I know the yearbook advisor. Without saying the words, I care about your book. My actions will do all talking for me. Oh, here, I saw this poster falling down. This good poster, you put it back up. Uh, there we go. Wow, that's leadership. It's not telling people what to do, it's showing people what to do. It's not about giving the big speech, it's about being friendly at the parties. It's about using the high rule. It's take that care out there, bring it in the hallways, walk through the hallways with a simple attitude. The hallway will be better when I walk through it. So please, stand up. <laughs> I will yell at you. If care is contagious and you'll yell at me, it starts with me and point yourself like this. Now please remove any pens I've had a few stabbings in the past. <laughs> Hopefully a blood donation starts with you. <laughs> so here we go, big thumbs, here we go. Habit number one says, if care is contagious, it starts with me. And one of the simplest ways to do it Remind me how you can be friendly outside the school with a certain body action. Can we all do it right now? The high rule. Take your care out there so more people bring it in here. But who's got to start that process? Me. You've got it. Now, 